I probably had sex with more than a hundred guys, I guess. Even before I was in high school, I was sexually active. I kind of like do a lot of crazy things. My name is Francis and I was only 19 years old when I was diagnosed with HIV. In 2020, there were more than 111,000 Filipinos estimated to be living with HIV. The epidemic in the country is still concentrated among the key populations, specifically for males having sex with males, transgender women, people who inject drugs, sex workers, and partners of these key populations. And they're getting younger and younger in age. In the last 10 years, the new infections have risen to 207%, primarily among young males who have sex with males, aged 15 to 24 years, making the Philippines one of eight countries that contribute to more than 85% of new infections in the region. The Philippines has the fastest growing HIV epidemic in the world, and it's really alarming. I think there's a lot of HIV cases in the Philippines kasi may mga kabataan po na wala pa masyadong knowledge at saka nahihirapan sila sa HIV prevention lalo na sa mga services. My name is JB and I am a volunteer from Jose Lily by Love Yourself and we educate young people about HIV. Back then I didn't know what HIV is. Only thing that I is that sex isn't something that you open up to your parents with. The 2018 Integrated HIV Behavioral and Serologic Surveillance revealed that the risky behavior among the key populations start early and conversely, protective behavior starts late. So, may mga HIV patient ako na parang 16 to 12 years old, parang sex active na po talaga sila. Asa, after 5 years lang po nila na natututunan ang paggamit ng condom at ang importansya nito. Kaya ngayon po, yung, ano po, yung clinic po namin, nagsiserve po kami at nagbibigay po kami ng mga freebies na condoms and lubricants. The young MSMs and transgender women are exposed to and continue to engage in high-risk behaviors with minimal protection. Particularly, only one in four young MSMs and PGWs have comprehensive knowledge on HIV prevention and transmission. Really, it's a challenge making preventive behaviors stick among these key populations. Another reason why our HIV cases are increasing is that people are falling through the cracks of the HIV care cascade continuum. Not all PLHIV are on life-saving ARV therapy and are virally suppressed. Of the latest estimate of 111,000 PLHIV, only 70% are diagnosed and only 61% of diagnosed are currently on treatment. There are nearly 12,000 PLHIV who are at loss to follow up. Viral load testing is also very low at 17%. This leaves more than half of PLHIV not on life-saving treatment and not virally suppressed and may be infecting others. It's really an overwhelming challenge to address social barriers to effective HIV response in the Philippines. We have cultural and religious beliefs stigma and discrimination, policy-related and structural obstacles posed by the health system itself, financial challenges, biopsychosocial hindrances such as ARV side effects, and the lack of support systems all mixing together to create this enormous problem. And now with COVID-19, which has placed this country in the longest community quarantine, this has added enormously to the problem of addressing HIV and AIDS in this country. We have had difficulty giving services for HIV screening, which is our main program. In terms of treatment support as well, we were unable to meet up with clients who are in need of psychosocial support and even medical assistance. We had to collaborate with other organizations to help provide for the basic protection of our volunteers. There were adjustments around providing treatment services as well. We had to partner with many organizations to make sure that we are able to provide treatment related assistance and drugs for our patients. Marami na akong nakaharap na mga client, lalo na sa kabataan. Some of my friends, probably around 10 of them, opened up to me and told me that they have the same condition that I have. Stemming new infections among the 15 to 24 years old, 
within the key and vulnerable population group is crucial. The Philippine HIV projections show that new infections will continue to increase at the current level of prevention and ART coverage. If the country is able to implement a fast-track comprehensive HIV program, the annual new infections will be reduced by two-thirds in 2025. The current HIV sector plan is aligned with a fast-track scenario. The goal is to reverse the trend of HIV epidemic by reducing estimated annual new HIV infection to less than 7,000 cases. We will do this through the high-impact HIV prevention, testing, treatment, and adherence strategies that will expand the coverage of prevention, diagnosis, treatment, and adherence among key populations, especially the young of MSM, TGW, and the PWID. Of course, we will not forget the vulnerable like women at risk due to sex work, female partners of MSM, pregnant women, and the male sex workers. Innovations include the online outreach, rollout of our combination prevention or the PrEP, a national condom strategy, and the support to our community centers for operationalization and for establishment. To plug the diagnosis gap, uh, testing options will be diversified to comprise our peer-led or community-based HIV screening, our healthcare worker-led or the facility-based screening, and self-testing. To address the gaps in enrollment to adherence, we will introduce a safer ARV regimen, uh, secure ARV supplies, expand our rapid HIV diagnostic algorithm to accelerate the access for confirmatory testing in our treatment centers and of course scale up our viral load testing coverage. So our policies and guidelines should also be institutionalized to improve our service delivery. So as you can see, we really have a good plan. But the problem is to do all this, we actually need funding. With the developed health system in the Philippines, the role of the local government unit is important in service delivery and HIV financing. For local government unit like ours to successfully implement innovations in local HIV program, we must invest in human resources, technology and technical support, procurement of prevention and treatment commodities, and most importantly, we must improve our health system. The fragmented approach and structural readjustment in investments, human resource, coordination platforms and mechanism brought about by the devolution of health services in the local government code should be addressed. Above all, the local government unit should ensure that its local HIV program are sustainable. In order to do this, we must include all HIV costings in our annual budget. In relation to HIV and AIDS, there are two new laws that bode well for the Filipinos. Republic Act 112.23, or the Universal Health Care, or UHC, automatically enrolls all citizens in the National Health Insurance Program. The Essential Health Benefit Package includes preventive, primary care, treatment, and rehabilitative services that are at affordable cost. Additionally, UHC provides complementary reforms in the health system. The new HIV and AIDS Policy Act or Republic Act 11166 anchors the country's HIV and AIDS response on the principles of human rights thanks to the strong and relentless advocacy of civil society. One big challenge that we still need to address is HIV-related stigma. The Philippine National AIDS Council, through the Human Rights Committee, has developed a roadmap to address human rights barriers to effective HIV response. The document steers PNAC to mobilize both rights holders and duty bearers to eliminate obstacles and ensure social protection for key populations, including young people. Also, meaningful involvement and participation of civil society and key population communities in all phases of program planning, implementation, monitoring and evaluation has proven to be powerful approaches to penetrate the hard-to-reach key populations. The country should continue to support and harness the collective potential of civil society and key population communities so that we can finally eliminate HIV and AIDS and bring this country towards the goal of zero new infections. The health sector plan for HIV projected that the country needs 620 
million US dollars from 2021 to 2023, of which only 40% of the total requirement is assured. After our successful activism that allowed for the passage of the new AIDS law, civil society will now turn its efforts towards HIV financing advocacy. And we need local government units to step up and close the funding gap. We have the means to turn around the HIV epidemic in the country. Laws, policies, and guidelines are in place to support rapid scale-up of innovations to give people options for uh, prevention, testing, differentiated services across HIV care cascade. But we need to make sure that these laws and policies are fully funded. We need to accelerate the implementation of the national AIDS policy. In the context of Universal Health Care Act, integrate mainstream HIV services at various levels of healthcare. Ensure the operationalization of the National Human Rights Roadmap to eliminate barriers to access HIV services and ensure social protection for key populations, especially the young people. We have a strong civil society who are fully engaged, but their capacities need to be strengthened and mechanisms put in place to scale up community-led actions that are time and situation adaptive to include other innovations such as one-stop shops, community centers, the use of digital and virtual spaces, combination prevention including pre-exposure prophylaxis, community-based and self-screening and telemedicine. We also need to mobilize sustainable domestic financing by embedding HIV prevention in the universal healthcare. We have to optimize collaborative partnerships with civil society by supporting community-led services through social contracting mechanisms. Explore options for viable co-financing between and among national and local government and development partners. To inform programming, targeting, financial and logistics allocation, further strengthen our national MNE systems, establish community-led monitoring structure, to calibrate a response that is sensitive to the evolving trends. There is hope. Flatten the curve, reverse the trend, end the HIV epidemic. Yes, we can. I have learned that I am not alone in this fight. I have people behind me. Hindi naman po dapat ikahiya o katakutan yung HIV. I also hope that in the Philippines, in the near future, uh, young people will not be afraid of HIV anymore. Oh,